Um, he woke some of us up this morning. <laughs> or did he wake all of us up? He woke me up. It was a long clock. It made a lot of noise. But it was the Lord that allowed me to hear the alarm clock. That allowed me to move my body. That allowed me to roll out of the bed. That allowed me to be in the right mind to realize that he was worthy to pray.
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. May God truly have a blessing to the reading and application of his holy word, which is blessed for now and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The scripture will be coming from Luke 8 chapter, 27 verse. Amen. amen. You have a say, amen. amen. Oh, wait a minute. Amen. Amen, amen everyone. Amen. Okay. It's called Jesus Christ's a storm. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a, into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded evil winds and wars, and they obeyed him. Amen. Amen. And God bless and a message to his word. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. So thank you for both those scripture readings. At this time, so we're going to ask that we continue in our worship together that we might sing. We're going to sing hymn 248. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We're going to sing the first, the second, and the fourth. That's what you have to do. We're going to sing all of them over and over again.
uh, add to your prayer list um, Clarence Hill II, which is Clarence Hill's father. Uh, condolences to the McLeod family for the loss of Brother James McLeod's sister, Rosa McNeil, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, please know today is future care at 1.30 if you're able to join us, please do so. Uh, the new church t-shirts, the votes have been counted and the winner is purple. <laughs> the t-shirts will be $10 each. Please see the Lady Jones uh, in the multi-purpose center after service. She does have some available, not all sizes as we get. But please see her in the multi-purpose center after service today. Please note on the 28th at 6.30 p.m. there will be a scholarship committee meeting in room 106. Um, kitchen committee will meet uh, on September 9th after service. And please note that there will be an official board meeting on September 26th. Any issues of concern should be submitted to your deacon member at large of the Office of the Secretary on September 8th. Uh, this is very important to all auxiliaries. The 2019 budget request are being accepted. The final deadline date is September 9th. No extension. Again, September 9th for your budget request. No extension. We have one flyer in the program when the reference to the fish fry that will be held on September, September 29th. Sponsored by the Kitchen Committee and honoring against uh, Deaconess Rosa Willis. And further information will follow. Now, we did not put the Jesus fly in the program this week, but those of you who have not completed your payment, the payment is due September 2nd. There are a few seats available, so if you wish to go, you must get that in um, and pay the final payment by September 2nd. And the prices are. Uh, most of you have seen this flyer for probably months and months and months. If you do not have a flyer, we probably have a few in the office and you can see the total amounts there. Thank you for your time and faith. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. It is now welcoming time. Amen. If there are any visitors, ask that you stand and give us a little bit about yourself and so do we have any visitors? Yes. 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 James Wesley Jones and his lovely wife, April, we welcome you. And if you are looking for a home in transition, here we are. <laughs> so anyhow, as we always do, let us stand, greet each other with a holy hug and a handshake, because some people may not get a hug or a handshake for the rest of the day. So on that note, please try.
said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. 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 Clap your hands, O oh, ye people. Yes. Lord, it's been good to you. Rejoice with the triumph of sound of joy. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. It's like God is still blessing all of you all throughout this entire week. We can tell that uh, we've been absent from one another for a little while about how long we fellowship on Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's good to see you all. Thank the Lord. I'm thankful. Uh, he allowed me to preach through revival this week. And some of you all came out. Uh, but we're thankful. I uh, said, saw Sister Brooklyn. Y'all remember Sister Brooklyn? Yeah. And her and her family, they're doing well. Her father is uh, 85, probably 83, something like that. He's still pastoring over here in D.C. And uh, she's over there playing the piano, so we had a good time uh, during this week. Thank the Lord uh, for them. It's good to see Sister Ashley with us in service today. Uh, let's be in prayer, continue to be in prayer for her family. Uh, her sister is dealing with a health condition right now. Well, the doctors uh, really uh, don't know what else to do. Uh, but we're going to continue to pray for the family. We're going to pray for the encouragement. Just pray that God continues to lift them up. We know that God is able. Amen. Amen. We know that God is able. We also want to thank uh, this church. Uh, we had yesterday, for those of you that made it, a wonderful turnout for our back to school fair yesterday. And you uh, listen very carefully. We gave nearly 100 book bags out yesterday filled with supplies and goods. And it's not because just the youth department, but you all gave as well. And even though you may not have been there in person, we want to see you in person next year. But if you all gave something, if it was but a dollar or a notebook, somebody in our community is blessed because of it. Amen. We want to invite you, we invite you to visit our, visit our Facebook page. You'll see some of the pictures and some of the things that we were able to give away. Uh, we were, uh, had a wonderful, uh, some wonderful vendors that were there, not trying to solicit anything from you, but to give you educational information. Things that you could use to uh, build your own children's future. So that's a blessing as well. We also want to thank our youth department, specifically uh, Jennifer, and Cynthia, and Ashley, and, um, uh, and all those youth departments. Sister Rashonda, I think they're working very hard uh, behind the scenes. I told them they were hazing up my wife yesterday because she spent all day doing face painting. And, uh, and those kids came in there with some uh, explicit instruction on what they wanted. And it took a long time. We had a good fellowship. Again, we were able to give out tracts as well uh, to let people know this is only about uh, school and education, but we want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we had a chance to share the word as well. Before we move into our prayer on time today, we want the church to be aware of one of our young people as well. Uh, you know, fourth quarter is over. We've got to start a brand new year. We didn't acknowledge our, our fourth quarter um, students this year. Uh, big, uh, part of it was on me, but a part of it was because of Prince George's County. I blame them. Fourth uh, <laughs> came out late. Uh, but we did have one of our young people who went on a uh, scientific expedition uh, in Georgia, Georgia Tech. And I'm going to give him an opportunity. He wanted to share with the church because, again, the church supported some of his funding as well to attend. So we want Brother Malcolm to come up and he's going to share with us briefly on how uh, he did with this, uh, with this training and development while he was here. Encourage him as he comes. Yes, take a few months to share my college experience with all of you. All of you. Uh, this summer, from July 8th to the 15th, I attended the National Youth Leadership Forum for Engineering and Technology at Georgia Tech University. My courses of study in this program was biomedical, aerospace, and civil engineering. In biomedical engineering, I learned how to construct a prosthetic leg to improve a person's mobility. In aerospace engineering, I learned how airplane wings are developed, and I also program helicopters to fly. In civil engineering, I led a group of five peers in designing a water tower. My team and I received fourth place against other engineering groups. I enjoyed my experience of being in my own college dorm room, making new friends. <laughs> uh, thank you all for your love and support for making my college dreams a reality. God bless you all. <laughs> Rising sophomore at West 
Wesley High School. He's also uh, one of our junior deacons here at the church. Amen. He's, he's, he's studying the scriptures, brother. Uh, GW, but Williams is taking him under his wing, and they've been working together with some different scriptures and things, and he's just an all-around good young man. Look at his mom over here. Just now, his mother and father. Brother Miles, my sister Larisha, Lord, thank God for them. Y'all know, yes, some of y'all may know, this is how this is how God just blesses us. And everyone going to pray. Um, I, I, I want to, uh, before I praise on them a little bit, give them some, some honor. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the providential hand of God. Because, you know, this week, we got word that our, our founder, Pastor uh, Missionary Grant Carter, made his transition from labor to reward. He went home to be with the Lord. And we found out, I believe it was on Monday, he made a quick, uh, they had a quick turnaround where the funeral was on Wednesday and Thursday. And, uh, you know, we were trying to, the church, bless God, we were able to send some things down there, some letters and um, some different flowers and a monetary um, honorarium. Uh, but for some reason, it kind of hit me kind of hard this week. And I was like, oh, why does it hit me so hard? I didn't know Pastor Grant that car that way. I mean, I only met him like two times. Uh, but I know it was tough on people like Pastor Lattimore and some of the founders and the pillars that are here at this church. But what I started thinking about and what the Lord was showing to me when I was reading the scriptures was about the incognito hand of God. And that's the hand that you can't see. And God is moving behind the scenes. And I started thinking about Pastor Carter, about how he came here in 76, 77, and he wanted to plant a ministry here in Clinton, Maryland. And through his labor, through his ministry, we are where we are today, by the grace of God. And then I thought about that because if Pastor Carter had not come up from Tennessee, then Antioch possibly would not have been in existence. That means that we would not know each other. We wouldn't be in communal fellowship with one another. Then I thought about Pastor Lattimore, about how he would not have passed him for 40 years here at Antioch. And then I thought about me, about how the Lord would not have opened the door for me to be able to pastor here at Antioch Baptist Church of Clinton. And it's all because of the providential hand of God who worked and orchestrated some things behind the scenes that we cannot see. And so church, I want to encourage you all this morning. Just trust and believe God. Whatever door he's opening, walk through it. Whatever door he's closed, trust and believe. He knows what he's doing. And that takes me to Brother Lonzo and Sister Alicia. They came all the way from California. Y'all miss it. That's 3,000 miles away. Came all the way to Maryland. God brought them to Antioch.
today. Your word promises and it tells us and encourages us that this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it, O God. We are so grateful for life, for health, and for strength, O Lord. We're reminded there are those around us that may not have health and strength. But God, if we're standing on our feet this morning, that's a reminder that you got us up. You hold us up and you're keeping us up. It's a reminder, oh God, that in you we live, we move, and we have our men. It's a reminder, oh God, that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. And as we inhale and exhale this morning, God, we just say thank you. Thank you, oh Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you for your love, which is extended from generation unto generation, oh God. Thank you, Lord.
you need a pen or pencil, bring your hands in the usher's will. Go, amen. amen. Now, would you all stand and follow the directions of the usher? Amen. amen. amen.
tonight. So pray for him. The word of the day as always. I ask you to pray for him and pray with him. Because it's not always easy to stand here. I gave him comfort in saying that the three Jameses was up here today. So, so the only thing he could do, the only thing left for him was to come out of the book of James. But I Receive the word. Amen. So we we'll receive the word as he brings forth the word. We're going to lead us further in praise and worship Amen. with song, and then we will hear from on high. Pray for them, pray with them, but hear from God and God alone. Amen. Amen.
we were talking, you know, people sing in that area. But I just got one little song I like to sing, just a couple of verses. It goes that she said, Come on, put in the room. Well, come on, put in the room. Well, Jesus is my doctor. Yeah. 
chapter of John. Just going to read a couple of verses. I think I'm just going to read from the first verse. I, I guess I go down to the left, if you don't mind. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethsaida, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his feet with her hand, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he adored, adored two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and go there, there again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumble not because he sees the flight of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled, because there is no light in him. These things say he, and after that he had unto them, say unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Amen. You may be seated. I might have to get my specs out of my eyes. They ain't good like they used to be. But I thank God once again for all of you here this morning. And especially for the young ones singing. You know, I, I just was looking a few minutes ago and I could remember my my daughters always grew up in this church and they were singing in the choir. And to show you how quick they grow and they leave us so fast. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody out there got children up here, hold tight to them for a little while. Yeah. Listen to their cry and listen to what they have to say. Because in a break of an eye, like my daughter, she'll be leaving me tomorrow, going back to school. But they grow up on us so fast. So take a little time with your children while you have a chance. Amen? Amen. 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 I'd like to talk to you this morning, if I may, about a personal encounter with Jesus. Amen. A personal Person. encounter with Jesus. My sisters and my brothers, the greatest witness of Christ is a witness that is seen day by day. Contrary to popular belief, the witness of a Christian lifestyle is not on what is taught, but one that is lived and is on display day by day. The greatest example of a Christian lifestyle is not to be found in books of theology. What one say will tell you who I am or what one thinks. Amen? Amen. But what I do will reveal to you who I am. How I pray and how I sing or shout is only a testament of my ability to learn the exercises of religion. How I walk and how I talk 
talk is only to show how God is working in my life. Amen. 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 That cannot be disputed and cannot be denied. Whether one knows it or not, our life is to be a testimony. Day by day. One which need not to be told by someone else. Amen. Amen. But one that is seen day by day, hour by hour, and minute by minute. Come on, stay with me now. Amen. And this is not only to give a testimony, but to be a testimony. Yes. Yes. And this is why I believe that the greatest witness is one that is seen day by day. That's talking about you. When you go to and fro, let your light so shine that what men may what? See your good work. Thank you, brother. John Gossip. Listen to me. John Gospel is one that hinges on personal testimony. John opened up his gospel speaking of Jesus, whom he suggests is the logos of the word of God. Jesus, says John, is the word made flesh that dwell among us. He came what right into his own, and his own received him not. Come on now. I got these papers, but I hope they don't mess me up this morning. <laughs> but yet, John says that Jesus is the one who came to give us power that one can ever imagine. And to give us power to be the sons and daughters of God. And, not, and yet, my brothers and my sisters, it is more than that. Listen to me this morning. The gospel speaks of testimonies which came from those that had an inner reaction with Jesus. John established who Jesus is and what Jesus does. But for some how, John Gospel has no power until you are able to see this Jesus with your own eyes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. You gotta take those scales off your eyes yes, sometimes yes, yes. and see things as they really are. Amen. How Jesus has worked in the lives of those that you love. And those that have been burdened down with sickness and distress. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not the only one that have had death or sickness in my family. Amen. Amen. And we have seen how it tears the family apart. Yes. Especially those that know not the masses. Yes. Yes. Because why? They don't have anything to hold on to. Yes. But if you know who you serve. You know who woke you up just yes. now. Yes. Come on now. Yes. You got an anchor? Yes. Come on now. Yes. That you can hold on to. Yes. That husband may not be able to see it. Yes. So that wife, if she knows God, she's going to have to step up to the plate. Amen. Because you know that God can make a way out of what? No way. No way. Yes. Oh, I told you, don't shave no tears. <laughs> So when you think about the goodness of God and how He has put in your life, sometimes you can't help but to shed a tear every once in a while. You let God know that you depended on Him. You let Him know that we you know from day one He has been with you. Because you hear that voice, you say, I ah, boy, we'll never leave you, brother. In other words, the gospel has no power until it had taken up 
residence where you live. In other words, this was so with them. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you can't walk around here, I hate to say naked all the time. <laughs> but God told us in the rain, he said, put on what? The whole one. Of God that you will be able to stand. Yeah. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. Yes. And in the lives of those that you see day by day. John says, my oh, wife told me to slow down. <laughs> John said, if you really want to know Jesus, how many of you want to know this morning? Yes. If you really want to know Jesus, yes. the one who bled and died for you and me, then you might want to talk to those newlyweds on the eve of their celebration. How they ran out of line. You know, you know the story. Yes. And those women just were empty. You might want to talk to Jesus when one day found a mess and turned it into a miracle. Come on, man. Yes. Talk to those newlyweds who on the day of their celebration. Come on now. On the day of that embarrassment and turn water into wine. If you're really not truly convinced, then talk to that man they call Nicodemus. You know him. Oh, yes. Nicodemus was a man like most of us today. He was a man who had church credentials, yeah. but he had no assurance of his soul salvation. Amen. 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 Just like some of us today. Yes. Some of us are still playing church. Amen. I heard the uh, song sang this morning. I forgot her name. And she was out in the, out in the yard playing with a brother. Shirley yes. Caesar. Yes. I heard her this morning. And she, it, it just reminded me of a long time ago when we was in the country. And my mother had come to D.C. to work. And my sisters and I, we've been so used to going to church that we didn't have nobody to take us to church. Uh -huh. So one day, we went out in the backyard. We had a big old barn. And my, my, my sister said, Jane, why don't we have a church this morning? She said, well, she be the preacher and she be the saint. And when I read that song this morning, just like something clicked in my mind. It's just like my mind ran back many years ago of how we were standing in the barn. And I don't know really what I was saying, amen. But I do know I called on Jesus. Amen. And with that day, my sisters got up and they started singing and shouting. And boy, I tell you, we had a good time. And when I heard a sermon this morning, I thought about just that event. I said, God, you're still working. Yes. Yes. You're still working, God. Yes. You're still working. Yes. Nicodemus, like I say, he was a man like most of us. He was a man who had church credentials, but he was not aware of his soul salvation. Nicodemus, he was a man that was living. But Jesus had to tell him one night, Little demons, you must be born again. Right. Yes. Little demons, you must be born again. Come on now. John says, if you want to know Jesus and how he deals with real people, then you might want to talk to that woman whom Jesus Met at the well. Yeah. No one really don't know what they talked about. Somebody said that they talked about or discussed politics. We don't know. And they talked about some special events of today. Or maybe just a private conversation. 
I heard the old preacher say it a long time ago. He said that you had to ask a brother or a sister. They may be saying, they may be talking about what to cook you today. Some fried chicken or some collard greens. <laughs> or some mashed potatoes. We don't know. But we don't know what Jesus talked to her about at the wedding. But we know that when it was all over, the Bible said that they saw the wrong. What did we do? Running to town. Ran to town and said, come and see a man who had told me everything that I have done. Yeah. And one day, you know, God going to step on the apple juice. You know, you're going to be right behind us. And one day, we're going to have to stand before the maker and give an account for everything that we have done. Yeah. Every bad thing and every good thing that we have done. We're going to have to stand one day and give it a count. Right. You know, we can run. The song says we can run, but we can't hide. Yeah. Ain't no hide and no seed anymore. Yeah. Kids don't play those games anymore uh -huh. that we used to play. Right. Hide and don't see. Seek them out and see if you can find Come on, man. God has been good to us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, follow me as you win. Now let us go to the mountain top. But we found Jesus feeding five thousand. Uh -huh. Counting the women in the truth. Leave the mountain top and go to the sea. And we found Peter walking on water in the midst of a storm. Come on now. Leave the mountain and leave the water. And go to a dusty roadside. And you will find a woman whom they wanted to stone to death. No one took time to find out her name. No one took the time to find out even what Jesus wrote in the ground. Amen. But when he, Jesus, spoke, he said, Woman, where are your accusers? You know, we are accused of so many things in this world. Before the day is over, Come on. somebody will accuse me of preaching too long. <laughs> Before the day is over, somebody will say something wrong about one another. <laughs> Where are those accusers? But let me just throw a look in here if I may. All of us in here are striving to go to heaven. <laughs> There ain't going to be nothing but one way ticket that. Yes, there ain't going to be no round trip ticket. Amen. Yes, right. So you got to be careful what you ask for. Yes, you want to go to heaven? Then you going to get up there and you're going to stay. There ain't going to be no turning around, coming back. Yes. Come on now. Yes, we have been accused of so many things. Bad mothers. Bad fathers. Bad sisters and bad brothers. Come on now. We have been accused. But thank be to God that He can make a way out of nowhere. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now. God has been good to us. Yes, yes, yes. He has been so good to us. My message today is not going to be very long. So I'm not going to hold you long. But to find out how good God has been. We have these testimonies yes. of those that have been through something from time to time. Yes. Yes. And what makes it so good, we are not ashamed to tell somebody how good God has been. Yes. 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 If God has brought you a mighty long way, yes. Yes. don't be ashamed to tell somebody that yes. God woke me up this morning. Yes. Yes. And he started me on my yes. way. Yes. Yes. Don't be afraid to tell your wife or your husband. That God had made a way for us. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Come on in. This God that we serve. A personal encounter with Jesus. Yeah. Now my sisters and brothers. I know from time past. That you have come in contact with the Lazarus story. So many of us have preached that sir. I heard my brother preach it one time. It's some time ago, but I heard him preaching. But Lazarus' story 
goes something like this. He says that the brother of Mary and Martha. You know the story. So I'm not going to spend a long time on it. Now to say he took sick and died. He took sick and died. Jesus had discerned to the base side of his friend. Stay with me now. But failed to arrive before death occurred. Mary and Martha, though they had different in opinion, they came to one conclusion. They say that if Jesus had been there, their brother would not have died. That goes to show me that they had confidence in God. Amen. That goes to show me that, hey, God was with them from the beginning. And Mary and Martha, they only thing they had to do was look back. But where God had brought them from. But during Jesus' arrival, Jesus took time to weep with Mary and Martha in the other mourners. John said, Jesus wept. He instructed them that he was the resurrection and the life. Oh, come on now. He, Jesus, had them to realize that he was both life and death. A personal encounter with Jesus. And then he proceeded to the cemetery to put death on hold and call us taking Lazarus from the grave. Yes, yes. Now I don't want you to get too comfortable this morning because this is where you play your part. I want you to imagine with me going with Jesus to the cemetery. Here we found Lazarus laying on the cold tombs. Come with me this morning if you will. And then we, the crowd, the Bible says that Mary and Martha and the other mourners, those other mourners may be you this morning, but we're going to go with Jesus just for a little while. Come on, we're going to take a walk to the graveside. Yes, yes. And all of a sudden the crowd grew larger and larger. Yes. And we look back and there were so many people crying, moaning, children laughing because they didn't know what to expect. Yes. Old folks dragging along, one by one. But when we got halfway to the grave side, all of a sudden Jesus stopped. And I heard him say these words, he said, Lazarus! And I could imagine Lazarus laying there on that cold stone. After a while, his body began to shake a little bit because he heard the voice of Jesus. Right? Somebody said he had the ankle bone which was connected to the leg bone. And the thigh bone was connected to the leg bone. You know, you know that old story. But I can imagine how Lazarus was laying there. And then after a while he started moving a little bit. They started moving a little bit. Then we went on to the grave site a little more. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And I can imagine Lazarus sitting up on the side on that cold stone. What in, the world, what in the world is going on? <laughs> but he heard Jesus calling out his man. The same way he went forward. And we're going to hear him call out man. Right. <laughs> morning, he's going to come by early in the morning. Yes. When he may be late at night. Yes. But he's going to call your name. Yes. I but we call your name, Pastor. And my name will be added. Yeah. And he's going to say, come on. Yes. 
You're not going to marry the old Arthur. Get up. Yeah. I asked myself, I said, how can he move from the stone to the door when he was all wrapped up? Uh -huh. How did he get to that? But we realize that God is in the blessing business. Hey, hey, hey. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Yes. Look what he done this morning. Amen. Woke you up and started two hours ago. Let you go to the church and let your harm or danger yes. come your way. Amen, Lord. Did nobody cross the pavement to hit you? Amen. And you sit here this morning filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Ain't yes. nobody hold you down. Yes. Ain't nobody hold you down if you want to shout a little while. Yes. You know, that's the problem with the church today. In my church, in the country, we used to have old wooden floor that the old lady would get up and shout. Just to be flying everywhere. Yes. Constantly doing his job. 
Come on, man. But I see Lazarus this morning. When they roll that big old stone from the way. What time is it? Oh, he had good time. <laughs> And there stood a dazzle standing. Come on, man. But don't you know one thing I read further down in that passage? They say when God raised Lazarus from the dead, say Lazarus did not say a mumbling word. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Only thing Lazarus did was just walk. But you know what the people did? The people tried to kill poor Lazarus all over again. They tried to kill him all over again. In the same way they would do you if you don't stand on God's word. Just back at it saying, where are your accusers? We're going to be accused for set up the Sunday. But as long as you put God ahead of you yes. and let him fight your battles. Yes. You don't have to worry about it. You can be just like that. You don't have to say a mumbling word. And you know, that's a good news for me today. Yes. 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 Long, but I just want to say I thank God for another day's journey. Yes. 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 Well, you know, when the pastor called me, I, I, I started telling him, like, I can't do no service. <laughs> You know, I, I was getting ready to be honest with you, I was getting ready to hide. <laughs> I like a lot of us do, we run and hide sometimes. <laughs> but I thought that would be good too. Yeah. And I know that you have. I can look out there this morning, up in the Jews. I can, I, I can tell you with God's children. I say, you know, we know each other. I don't care about you trying on the street for the first time. And you don't have to say anything. I can look at you and tell that you are God's child. We're not doing it for no show. And we're not doing it trying to boast ourselves. But I just thank God because we realize that the truth is in the message. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thank you this moment. Yes, sir. You know, our message is a little short. But God is able to do exceedingly above everything that we could ask. Yes, Amen. And that's what I have to get in the morning. That's what I stand for. Um, you know, I, I, my, my, my wife say every time I preach a sermon, I have to say something about my mom. Y'all going to have to forgive me. Right. Amen. See, my mom yes. broke me from a mighty long way yes. with the help yes. of the Lord. Yes. Amen. She struggled, yes. but yet she failed. Yes. I went to school up in the day with cardboard in my shoes. All right, told me I don't, I don't talk, don't talk about it all. Yeah. You know, but sometimes you have to be reminded that God has yeah. put yeah. 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 too high in life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were riding around in not one car, but we got two cars. Yeah. And if you look at some of you, we got two or three homes. Yeah. But the house that we live in, we can lay down in the dining room and look through the ceiling and we saw the sky. <laughs> and we saw the sky. big old pot belly stove. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Come on, yes. go to the mountain and hold the wood and yes. Yes. put it up and keep warm. Yes. You see, I can't help but to thank God. I can't help yes. but to thank Him for where He had brought me from. Yes. And I'm not ashamed to tell somebody. Yes. How good God is. Yes. You see, we get so tangled up and tied up and wrapped up that we can't tell nobody how good God has been to us. Yes. Let them know, hey, I didn't get here all by myself. Yes. It was God that brought me yes. from a long, long oh, way. Yes. Come on, man. You make up somebody else like that this morning. Right. You may be struggling and you think you're the only one. But somebody had to pay the price for us to be here at this moment. Yes, yes. You know, when I look out at this moment, you know, when I came to this church, there were two ladies here that I really admired. 
and her name was Sister Sims and uh, her, sister, her daughter. And they used to sit right there where my sister sat there. And that lady, I tell you, set my soul on fire sometimes. And every time I come into church, I can't help but to see them and Brother Willis and Sister Willis all them. That's why I say we got such a big crowd of witnesses. I don't mean to scare nobody. But you know, I believe sometimes that they visit us, you know, in spirit. I really do believe. I don't know if everybody can believe what you want to believe. But that's what God is probably. He said, you're not here alone, boy. Amen. Somebody had paved the way. Amen. And when I look out, my brother Willis used to sit over there all the time. He told me one time, he said, Brother Club. He said, you know, you need to stop scrabbling the fence. <laughs> so I said, oh, what do you mean, Brother Willis? He said, you know what I mean. <laughs> he said, you need to stop standing in the fence and come on over here where you belong. <laughs> and I thank you for that. Amen. Because some people, they see things in you, but they refuse to tell you. Right. Right. Some people refuse to tell you anything. But I thank God this morning for you, 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 and all of you up there. Because one day when this old walk is over, and we all have gone to the last some hard work away. Yeah, Somebody say, what a time, we're going to get to heaven and we're going to shout. Oh, yeah. What a time, what a time, <laughs> when all of God's children get together. Come on, man. Yeah. I thank you this morning. Yeah, yeah. In Jesus' holy precious name, we pray. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah.
Teach us to serve you with an upright heart. God, to love our neighbor as ourselves. This ministry is not our ministry. It's your ministry, God. It all belongs to you. For upon this rock, we build your church. And God, the gates of hell will not be built against me. We thank you now for what we've seen and heard on today. Bless us, O oh God, and let us take worship with us as we leave this building. God, I pray that you bless everyone on the side of my voice. That you comfort them when they're up and when they're down, oh God. Bless them in their labor and in their leisure when they're going out and when they're coming in. God, when they're with one another and when they're in isolation, prove to them that you're the God who will never leave them nor forsake them, oh God. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who will present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us now sing our church doxology.